Today we must dispense with the author introduction beyond the merest formality as there is simply little to no information to be had on Cecil Drummond Wolf beyond the fact he was born in Greece and was the brother of Adeline Kingscott who wrote under the pseudonym of Lucas Cleave. For our today's delectation I have chosen a most unusual little book, Wolf's 1896 The Ban of the Gobe. A kind of conventionally British take on Lovecraft, decades before Lovecraft began his writing career, this is a story of deformed human-animal hybrid people living under water, menacing people on the shore. A man casually meets a young woman at a spa. Within a few weeks, out of sheer boredom, he falls in love with her and uh, she agrees to marry him. But then suddenly, she and her father run off without a word, leaving in complete utter loss for months on end, with no contact information and no explanation whatsoever. And then, out of nowhere, her father sends his daughter's suitor a note asking him to come at once to the godforsaken middle of nowhere, Scotland. Arriving in time, constant mention is being made of some great secret old Jansen the girl's father has, and the narrator and his fiance keep bringing it up. This for pages and pages before the story finally gets around to Jansen explaining it. Eventually, Jansen reveals that his deformed hands and feet and other physical discrepancies are not the result of an accident, but that he is in fact a descendant of a fish-like people from the north who had been hounded and chased out of Norway due to the greed of their head priest, supposedly living for several hundred years. A notorious pirate amongst their tribe, the Fiskman, named Jan, is found and, assuming the tribe had abandoned him, he helps to plunder his tribe's old hiding grounds, uh, but finds nothing except the old Gube, the centuries-old priest, who curses him and all the firstborn of his line for betraying them, and then runs off. Either he's then resettled in Norway, given a wife, and finds a family. Janssen then narrates the tragic fate that befell all the firstborn of this family, something very notably, uh, notable to himself, as he is his father's only child, and his daughter is his only child. He has spent years looking for the remnants of the Fiskmen, but once he finds them, they not only get too used to his constant delivery of gifts and presents, but demand his daughter to be married to one of them to rejuvenate their species. A short struggle takes place, where Jansen dies, and then it successfully scares the approaching horde of Fiskmen off from the Jansen house by shooting some of them um, at a distance. And this is the only real slight bit of disappointment in the novel, since the image of the howling fish slash seal men converging on the house was sufficiently chilling as an idea, but the author has them all defeated and chased off pathetically easily. Worst, you'd think that the old Gube who demanded Edna Jansen be forced to live in their slimy grotto under the sea, and who was basically the cause of their entire tribe slash species misfortune due to his own unfettered greed to begin with, would get his comeuppance, or at least get shot, but no, he doesn't come up at all from the water, and uh, the only fiskmen that do get killed are completely unnamed ones of no clear status. Still, it is a fascinating example of early, late 19th century sea people fiction.